In this video, we are going to discuss about what is TensorFlow and how do we use it. What is the difference between TensorFlow 1 and 2? What are the several features which are there in TensorFlow 2? And how can we install it? So to begin with, the basic definition of TensorFlow is that it is one of the most popular libraries for deep learning and end-to-end -end open source machine learning platform for everyone. It is widely used today amongst the researchers and professionals at all levels. TensorFlow was developed by Google Brain and the version 1, we can say the TensorFlow version 1 was released in 2017. You can visit the official website of TensorFlow also and like here I have opened the web official website you can see tensorflow.org. Here is a complete documentation given for everything which is there and similarly you can get started with the TensorFlow. You can click here and here you can see there are several tutorials also there along with the example of end-to-end -end example and you can also see the guides which are also there. For beginners also you can see there is a very basic code written and these things which we have done in machine learning also dividing a test set and a train set and then analyzing the model. Here we are fitting it similarly we use in machine learning also and then we are evaluating in machine learning we did prediction. Quite same like that and this is how we can do it. We can import TensorFlow as TF also and we can check the version of TensorFlow also that what is the version of current version version of TensorFlow. Now here you can see that you can copy and run this code also in your Google interactive notebook that is Colab which we are using and that we will do in later now. But now you can see that here in the notebook I have checked the version. So what I have done is firstly I have imported the TensorFlow here, print then I have want to check the version so I have written for that TensorFlow 2 underscore version. And as I execute this particular cell here you can see that it returns me that the version is 2.4.1 that means it is TensorFlow 2. So this is the very basic about TensorFlow and now let's get back to what we are doing. So we discussed about TensorFlow 1 and it is released in 2017 and right now we check that our version in Google Colab is TensorFlow 2 and that makes the development of ML application much easier. The TensorFlow version 2 makes the ML application development much easier. Also it is with tight integration of Keras. Now there is Keras also this is a new term which is in which is used. Keras into TensorFlow and eager execution by default, Pythonic function execution. TensorFlow 2 makes the experience of developing applications as familiar as possible for Python developers. Keras is actually an API which is there having its own sort of large data set that can be easily used for model design and further on. Another fundamental feature of TensorFlow, it is ability to develop and deploy the models on multiple platform and environment. Like here you can see that in the training, Data design with the TF dataset, TensorFlow, it has its own set of dataset also. Also, we can do it with the Keras estimators also. In training, there is distribution strategy, that is CPU, GPU, TPU. And then for analysis, there is TensorBow, so that you can plot the graph, so you can say analysis can be easily done. You can save the model also, like we did in machine learning also. We used the concept of save model. Here also, you can save the model. And then you can use it for anywhere. If you're using it on cloud, or then you can use TensorFlow serving. For Android, OS, for Android, iOS, Raspberry Pi, you can use the TensorFlow Lite and for browser, you can use the TensorFlow.js. This is the complete thing which is there. TensorFlow ecosystem supports the development in Python, JavaScript, Swift and the data system or we can say the data pre-processing and the model building and the transformation pipelines are much easier. If you want to run your model in a web browser, then you can use the tensorflow.js or you deploy it on mobile and embedded services, then you can choose for tensorflow Lite. And if you are interested in large scale production or you can say large scale production environment, then your choice is tensorflow extended. So this is the very brief about tensorflow. Now we are going to see that how can we install the tensorflow. For the collab I have shown you, you have to simply import it and you can check the version of TensorFlow. If you are using Anaconda, then how can you do that? That I will also show you. Now for Anaconda also the process is very simple. What you have to do it, you have to simply on the command line you have to write pip install. And once the TensorFlow is installed, it is important to confirm that the library was installed successfully so that you can start using it. So then you can open your Jupyter notebook or you can any other notebook you can use or the file where you're writing the code. Then you have to simply write like we did in Google Colab also. You have to import the TensorFlow first and then you can check the version also that which is the current version. So for that also simply you have to write in a print statement that you want to check the version of TensorFlow. That is TensorFlow.2 underscore version you have to write. And then after running 
running this code you will get the current version which is installed in your system and you will, can also see that it is correctly installed or not and for collab i have already shown you that how we do it now the thing arises is what is the difference between the tensorflow 1 and 2 what is the basic difference between them so now we will be discussing that what is the difference between the TensorFlow 1 and 2 and the very first difference which is there is that easy to use without loose in paradigm of TensorFlow 1. That is in TensorFlow 2 also we are using the same concept only for writing the code but we are not losing any paradigm of TensorFlow 1. That means we are using that same concept only but there are a few changes. For example if you see a sample code which is there in TensorFlow 1. Then what happens is for executing a particular set of code you need to create a session. We can say that first creating a computational graph. For executing a set of code you need to create a separate session. A computational graph is nothing but a series of TensorFlow operation assigned in a graph of nodes. So you have to assign every variable also in form of nodes like node1 equals to tf dot constant. And then you have to give here the value and similarly you have to mention the data type also which is there that is float 32 or 64 whatsoever. And if you're mentioning a constant also then you have to do, do like that. So a computational graph is nothing but a series of tensorflow operation arranged into graph of nodes. There will be several nodes which will be there. Now to evaluate this node we must run the computational graph within a session. So it is not like that now that you are initializing simply a equals to 5, b equals to 6 and you generate the output that a plus b and then print c. So that is not happening now. You have to create a particular session for generating this sort of code or you can say summation of number or any other sort of code so you need you need to run that computational graph within a particular session this is in tensorflow 1 but this concept is not there in tensorflow 2 because in tensorflow 2 we have a concept of eager execution now this concept of eager execution is by default in tf2 this is by default in TensorFlow 2 only. Eager execution means that TensorFlow variables in Tensor can be used straight away. There is no need to run an initializer or no need to create a session for those objects where the values need to be stored. This is quite really a big change for the whole graph building and running a session paradigm. Also in TensorFlow 2, Keras has become the default high level API. We while we I'm briefing you, I was telling you about Keras also. So Keras has become the default high level API we can say in the TensorFlow 2. So the complete Keras API is now wrapped up as a part of TensorFlow installation only and has become seamlessly integrated with TensorFlow. So TensorFlow 1, we need to separately install the Keras, but now we do not need to install separately Keras if we are using TensorFlow. Two. These are the few differences which are there that easy to use without losing the paradigm of TF1. Sample code is very different where I have to create every node and then that node in a computational graph requires a session but that concept is not required in TensorFlow 2. Why? Because we have eager execution. Thirdly, we have Keras as a default high level API which is already wrapped up as a part of TensorFlow installation in TF2 whereas in TensorFlow 1 we need to separately install the Keras library. So we use TensorFlow 2 nowadays because it is quite much in use and quite efficient and it is much easier to code in TensorFlow 2. So by the end of this video we discussed about what is TensorFlow, why it is so much in use and what are the paradigm shift which has been done from TensorFlow 1 to 2, how can we install it and next we will be discussing more about this eager execution in our upcoming video.